Hello everyone, it's your boy Rob Amamba. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be actually doing a request from my Discord. So go join in that Discord community down in the description if you want to ask for custom videos. And in this video, we'll be learning how we can make a skin selector for your game. So over here, I have my main menu. I can choose my skin. I can choose a lava skin or a brown skin. So I'll choose lava, and then I can start the game. And there you go, I get the lava skin. This even saves even after you close the game, so this is super helpful for making, you know, skin selectors. So let's get right into it. So before we get started, I would just like to let you guys know the basic setup that you should already have. So currently I have this menu, which just has a play button, and that will lead you straight to your game scene. And I also have this game scene, which has my player, obviously, which is just a capsule, and I also have a camera pointing right at it. I'm going to start by actually creating a new scene, and this will be where you can select your player model. So we can do something like, we can call it something like Skin Selector, and I'll double click on it. And then inside of here, I'll create a UI, a very simple UI. So UI text or text press pro, or actually button. If I zoom into this button, I'll label it as something like play game. And then I'll make some more buttons. And these will be for the different skins. So this, for example, will be, I don't know, lava skin. And then I'll make another one for, I don't know, the grass skin. So now that we got that, the next thing that we want to do is go inside of our build settings. So file build settings. And we want to add all of our scenes. So I'm going to put my menu first. I want to put my skin selector second. And then I'm going to put my game third. So then now we can close out of this. So this will just tell us in what order we want to go to the scenes. So inside my menu, I want a button that will let us go to the skin selector. And from the skin selector, I want a button that goes to the game. That doesn't mean that we can't have something like a button in menu to go straight to the game, which we will do, but uh, that just so that this just flows properly. So if I go back into my menu. Let me just save this. We have our play button, inside the skin selector we have this, and inside my game we have my game. So let's make these buttons actually do something. So I'm going to start with the play button. I'm going to create a new script, so I'll select my canvas and I'll add a new script called button manager. I'll create and add it. And then uh, we'll wait for it to load. Alright, so now that button manager is open in Visual Studio, so let's make our functions that we want to be called when we press the buttons. So the first being when we want to start the game, so public void start game. And then we can simply just tell it to load the scene. So at the very top, I'm also going to be importing Unity Engine Scene Management. And then void start game, I'll do scene manager.load scene and I'll be wanting to load the second scene because in our, our build settings our second scene is on game. Uh, the next function we'll be wanting to make is when the user wants to open the skin selector so we can do public void skin selector and this time we would want to load our first scene. So we can do scene manager dot load scene one. We'll also be wanting to have some buttons that will decide which type of skin we want. So we can make a public void ground. The two skins I'll be using in my game are will be a ground skin and a lava skin. Obviously, you can choose whatever you want. So that's just what I'm going to be naming my functions. So I have a ground skin and a lava skin. And inside of each of these functions, I'll just do something like uh, change. 
skin. Change skin. Okay, so let's uh, save this using Control S. Let's head back into Unity and let's assign all of these buttons. So I'm going to click on my play button and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click plus. I'm going to drag in my canvas because my canvas had the script button manager and I want to go to button manager and I'm going to select start game. And then I'll go to my other scene. I'll go into my skin selector scene. I'll save the scene. And in here, I'll select the play game one and I'll click add. And in this scene, I need to add the, the script again. So I'll click add component and I'll add my button manager. And then if we go back here for our play game, we clicked add, we'll drag in canvas. For button manager, we'll do start game again. Now for our lava skin, which is the skin I have. Oh, oops, messed up. Let's undo that. I'll click add, drag in canvas, and I'll select under button manager, lava. For grass, I'll do the same. Button manager, and I will be selecting ground. So now that that's all done, we can start adding our skins. So I'm actually going to be using an asset that already has these skins that I would like to use, but you can make your own and I'll be showing you how you can make your own in a couple of seconds, but I'm going to be importing the uh, skins I'll be using. So, so I've imported both of my materials, so I will just, I'll just drag them back into assets so that you can see them. So now you can see I have my ice and I have my stylized lava, but I also want to be making a default. And this will also show how you can make your own materials. So if you right click, you can click create, head over to materials, and I'll set this to something like default. And for default, I'll just set it to all white, all black. I'll set it to, actually, I'll just set it to all white. That will be our default material. Now that we have our materials, let's make it so that when you click on the lava skin and the grass skin, it actually sets what type of skin you want. So I'm going to head back into our void ground and our void lava. And in here, I want to be using something called player prefs. So this basically means that whatever we decide to change inside this player prefs, it will change for the entire game, meaning the next time the user logs on, they will have, be continue playing with the same skin. So this is super useful because obviously we don't want the player to have to go all the way back to the menu and change their skin to their favorite skin every time they play the game. We just want it to happen a couple times when they want to change it, right? So we can do this using player prefs. And we'll be setting the string of skin. So we want to set the value of skin. And now we have to tell it what we want to set it to. And so I want to set it to grass. And we also want to save this, so we can do playerpress.save. And there you go. So inside of ground, we save it as grass. Now we can do the same inside lava. So I'll just be copying this over. And I'll be doing skin, and I'll be setting it to lava. Perfect. Perfect. So uh, let's save this. And let's create a new script at runtime, meaning inside of our game scene. So I'll go to scenes, I'll go to my game, I'll save the scene, and I'll select my player, and then I'll add a new script to my player, which will be a skin, uh, skin outfit. And we'll be creating this and opening this in Visual Studios. So inside of this skin, uh, uh, inside of this script, we basically just want to define all of our materials. So at the top, I'll just do public material lava, public material ground, 
public material default. And be careful not to say just default because default is a keyword already used in C sharp. That will give you an error. And lastly, we also want to know our player so that we can change it. So we can do public game object player. Now we want this to happen in void start, meaning this only happens at the very beginning. So in void start, we can do if player prefs dot get string. And now we want to tell it the name that we put inside button manager. So we put the name as skin. So I'll copy this. So we get player press dot get skin. And now we want to tell it a default if this player preference does not exist. So if, if it, we'll just set it to default if it does not find skin inside of our player press. And then we'll say if what we get as skin is equal to grass. Meaning, if we pulled grass, if we set it to grass, then we want to set the skin to grass. So we will just do player dot get component mesh renderer dot material is equal to ground. And notice how we used double equals here and single equals here. The single equals is for setting, and the doubles equal is for comparing. So now I'll just copy this over three times. One, two, like that. And then the next time we want to check if it, the skin is equal to lava. And if it's lava, then we set the material to lava. And lastly, we want to check if it is equal to default. And if it's default, then we just want to set it to default. Now. So that's it for this script. We're going to save it using control S, go back into Unity, wait for it to compile. And so I actually changed my ground grass with ice, just so it'd be a little interesting. So now I'll just be dragging and dropping into our skin outfit script. So for lava, I'll drag in lava. For ground, I'll be dragging in ice. For default, I'll be dragging in default. And for our player, I'll be dragging in itself. So now, if we head back into our scenes and we go back into our menu, we save this. We go into our skin selector, actually. Hit play. If we hit play game, it should just take us to the default material. But if we click on lava skin and then hit play, now we got the lava skin. And now if we hit play again, go into grass skin, hit play. We got the ice skin, perfect. But if we go into our menu, we don't have a button that takes us to skin selector. And this play button just takes us back into the game, which is fine, but I'm actually gonna be creating a new button that takes us into the skin selector. So I'll expand canvas, I'll right click and create a UI, I'll be creating a button. And inside of this button, I'll just be saying skin selector. On the button, I'll add a function, drag in canvas, and for the function, I'll be selecting, selecting skin selector. So now if we hit play from the menu, we should get an option to click on skin selector, and now we can choose our lava skin, our grass skin, and we can play the game. And it even saves what we last selected in our skin, for the next time, even after you close the application. So that's perfect. Now, the last thing I want to do is make it so that inside a skin selector, it actually shows a preview of this skin. So this will be a little bit of a trial and error, and it took me a little to figure it out. But what you can do is we can right click inside of our hierarchy. We can create a capsule like we would normally do. Oops, not a cylinder. 3D object capsule, and I'll just be making this twice for the two skins we have. So I'll be setting these both, I'll select both of them and I'll set their position to zero, zero, and zero. So now you can see they're all the way over here, which is fine, but I'm going to uh, move it over. And if I press R, I can scale it in size. So I'll scale it. 
and then I'll move it till about where I want it. I want it to be under the lava skin. And then I'll do the same for the other other capsule we have. I'll move it, I'll move it here. And now for both of these skins, I'll actually give it the material that we want it. For the lava skin, I'll drag in the lava skin. And for the grass skin, I'll drag in the ice skin. And for the, and now if we hit play, we still don't see them. And that is because the camera is a little bit off. So we can see this is the camera's view. So we can move this here, move this here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. We kind of want to line it up so that you can see them. And you can see the camera preview, so that looks like it's in the scene. So now if we hit play. So that looks about good, but I kind of want them to be lowered. So what I would do is I would select both of these. I would drag them down. Now if you hit play. So this is where the trial and error comes in. But you can see that's good enough for this tutorial. And you can always really, obviously just play around with it. I can set the lava skin, and I can see it in my game with my skin. So that's perfect. So uh, once again, yeah, you can just play with this, try it out, and I hope you enjoy and hope this comes in helpful in making a skin selector. So thank you for watching.